There's the ring culture meme which says he could just leave. But Dame's loyalty to the Trailblazers organization in the midst of the Super Team era, and the fact that, as even Steph Curry said himself, Dame has been hooping, man. I think he's been the best point guard in the league Lillard's this season. been the best point guard in the NBA this season should give him respect at all costs, despite him not having won a championship. How does Dame's situation relate to the infamous quote-unquote new media? Where does Dame rank among NBA players? And should more players follow in the footsteps of the face of Portland, Oregon? Before answering that, please subscribe and leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Just 19.2% of my channel's audience is subscribed. Follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. Thank you, the world, for supporting this platform. So, a podcast talking head, also known as the most important defender and passer amidst the Warriors dynasty in Draymond Green, has brought up the point about what the new media surrounding the NBA and sports in general is about. In said new media, criticism is still very prominent, but more than ever before, it's the raising up of players' legacies instead of tearing them down. The defense of them in rough moments is what the new world of information sourcing is all about. Wait a Somebody stopped them. No, it yeah, was the first round. Okay, wait. they didn't even get they didn't even get a chance to pass gas before this off season was done. The old media, with all due respect to Stephen A, who's come a long way in terms of providing new storylines and analyzing factors that are attributed to a player's legacy, he and Skip Bayless, among many others throughout the late 2000s and early 2010s, were guilty of raising players up who'd won rings and tearing players down who hadn't. It is not enough for you to win the championship riding Dwayne Wade's coattails. If he's the MVP of the NBA Finals and you show up smaller than many me like you did for four straight fourth quarters of the NBA Finals, it still won't get biased. You can walk around with that ring and think you got something all you want to. You had damn well better be the reason the Miami Heat win this title. I'm talking, he's got to show up. He's got to make amends for not showing up in that NBA Finals last year. You gotta get it done. Just not taking into account the situation surrounding them just judging players solely based off how many rings they had. It got to the point where ring culture became so incredibly gassed up, and it still is incredibly gassed up, that you inevitably have the rare casual fan in this world strolling around legitimately thinking in the back of his mind that J.R. Smith owns a better legacy than a guy like the ringless Charles Barkley. I touched more on ring culture and the super team era in my Phoenix Suns video recently which you can go watch after this. But that narrative all relates back to Dame time because many people don't take what he's brought to the table seriously and what he continues to bring to the table seriously because he hasn't won rings. Let's evaluate the best players Dame has ever played next to to really see if it's fair to say he hasn't lived up to expectations in terms of not having achieved the ultimate glory quite yet. He played with prime LaMarcus Aldridge for what is still the seventh most amount of games Lillard's played next to any teammate for He'd form an elite pick and pop duo with Aldridge, but it was at that point when Dame was in his first few years learning the association, it's not like he was in a position to take Portland to a championship as the top dog. The now retired Aldridge would be a great fit for the modern game with his floor spacing as a big. He used to destroy my Raptors back in the day. Unfortunately, Aldridge was one of those number one options who'd get exposed come the playoffs, game plan for, whatever you want to call it. And as I said, Dame hadn't hit his prime yet, and those two were teammates. The second most tenured teammate for Dame is, to be fair, a player with one of the best careers to have never made an all-star team in CJ McCollum, but CJ has still never made an all-star team. It says a lot about the lack of talent that Dame's had at his disposal, that Myers Leonard is the teammate that's played the second most amount of games next to Dame. The top three to six in between Myers Leonard and Aldridge are out of the association Al Farouk Aminu and Mo Harkless, current starting center in the fairly solid Yusuf Nurkic, prime Nick Batum, who's still kicking it with the Clippers, and the out of the league Alan Crabb. As I mentioned, Steph's already said himself that Dame's elevated into the NBA's best point guard this year. In terms of where Dame currently ranks among all players, considering he's fourth among all players in scoring, tied with Klay Thompson for second among all players in three-pointers made per game, the only player aside from Luka and Jaw to be top 10 in both points and assists per night, and the only player other than Luka and Donovan Mitchell to drop a 60-piece, albeit with Dame's less than elite defensive impact, it's arguable that he's top five. Top five, what? Top five. We talked about Dame's teammates historically, 
but the Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons fueled supporting cast he has currently around him isn't the most ideal situation in terms of having championship aspirations either. Former All-NBA defender and 76er Matisse Thybul has played well in his first couple games in Rip City. Anthony Simons has had a breakout offensive season and Jeremy's provided a solid 20 points per night. But no matter who's around him, the shot-creating wizardry of Dame, as we've seen with every playoff all-time dagger he's drained in the past to put Oregon basketball fans in a frenzy, can get you fantasizing about a playoff run in some form, maybe not a championship. However, two bona fide impact players in Josh Hart and Gary Payton II were dealt at the trade deadline. Those two were first and fourth on Portland in plus minus. This team's second score in Anthony Simons is a full minus 150 behind the plus 111 Lillard in that plus minus category. Jeremy Grant is over 100 points behind Dame in that area as well. Stephen Curry has obviously and infamously changed the game of basketball, having taken the three-point era to a whole new level. But Damian Lillard and even Kyrie Irving in those early 2010 years before Steph had really broken out onto the scene, they don't get talked about enough for their revolutionary impact. The point guard era is still debatably going on, although the combo forward position, in my opinion, in terms of the volume at that position, has taken over as the new age phenomenon in terms of what kind of player GMs crave the most. But the PG era lasting for as long as it potentially has isn't attributed to Dame's impact in our dialogue nearly enough. Dame's career has essentially gone how Stephen Curry's would have if he didn't have the front office surrounding him with the properly suited pieces. Damien's consistency and remained dominance after all these years with the likes of Derrick Rose, Kyrie, and Russell Westbrook all in some sense taking a dip in terms of their all-around value, Dame should be respected at all costs due to his longevity, his ability to add new facets to his repertoire every year, and overall how he's consistent. Despite about to turn 33 this upcoming summer, which makes me feel old personally, those qualities I just highlighted have helped Dame increase his production this season across the board. With 757 games of regular season mileage, 61 games of playoff mileage, which includes a West Finals appearance and 12 grueling best of seven playoff matchups all being racked up. The aging yet spry and determined Dame time is still finding a way to post the highest scoring average plus the highest field goal and charity strike percentage of his career. Additionally, even though he doesn't have the best team of options around him this year, even for his standards, Damian is still posting the third highest assist average of his 11-year career. So all of what we looked at today proves to us that Damian Lillard is still generally not given enough credit and is pretty disrespected, as Dame's blend of athleticism and shooting ability is something we've never seen before. Thumbs up if you want to see more Damian Lillard content. Why is Dame most unfairly disrespected in your opinion? Best answer gets next video shoutout. The two shoutouts from my last upload and this one are on your screen. Going to GTT, who says the Nets can dog any team in this league. And to Joshua Rosen, who says I think the dunk contest needs to offer a larger prize and you're only allowed three tries per dunk. Last year's dunk contest was a waste of time and it felt like Obi Toppin won by default because everyone else missed their dunks. I'm a big Mac McClung fan, but when the dunk contest is full of names that the vast majority of people don't know unless you're a big basketball fan, you're not going to get the viewership or excitement that you used to get when stars like MJ would dunk. Thanks for competing in Community Speaks. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and peace. I appreciate all the fans I have. Hate me or love me. You watched. That's all you could do. I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. No, it's not. It's it gets the people going.